Good evening, everyone. Um, I think we'll have fun mainly because you're trying to understand what I'm telling you <laughs> more than else. <laughs> so, you got a question already? <laughs> what did I just What did I just say? <laughs> um, welcome to our second information evening um, for ASIS uh, for launching on the 17th of September. Um, we're using obviously these evenings to let people know uh, about needs we have, about things that are coming up that you might be able to get involved with, and uh, Rick will be bringing some information uh, on that later on. Um, but let's let's open in prayer. Father, we thank you for uh, your unfailing love to us. We thank you for your relentless kindness and mercy to us and grace. And as we come uh, to another evening, we know that you're with us. Uh, we believe in what you're doing with us uh, and seeing ASIS uh, launched again in this city, that we would become uh, an influence, that we would have an impact uh, to see your kingdom come. Father, thank you um, that you have been faithful to us over the years and we have seen you at work. And we ask... Uh, for your help, we ask that you uh, give us wisdom, uh, discernment, and understanding as we move forward. In Jesus' name, amen. So, again, welcome to everyone. Um, this is our second week, as I've said. Um, and one of, the, one of the things that we're doing is we're letting people know about one of the, the important values that we have um, that's found in Ephesians 4, 11 to 16, and you know, referring to us as a, as a five-fold um, ministry. Um, and I should have had my Bible ready at this. Apologies, just bear with me one second. So if you want to actually turn there to Ephesians 4... And it says in verse 11, and it gives some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we are no longer to be children tossed here and there by waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in all aspects into him who is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body, of the building up of itself in love. And what we're looking at is a, is a church that's maturing its people. Um, Rick has a far better, and he will probably be speaking on it next week, has a far better understanding of, of sheep and how sheep are to look after and, and the role of the shepherd. Um, and so often we've just had the role of the pastor for so many years within the church. But there's actually four others, apostle, prophet, evangelist and, and teacher and I guess we, we're, we're very familiar with the evangelist and the teacher uh, and my one of my jobs tonight is to actually explain um, the role of, of the prophet. Um, as human beings we all have a past, we have a present uh, and we also have a future and our desire to know the future is something that has been wired into us. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't have questions regarding, well, what's my purpose in life? What I'm supposed to do? You know, we, we, we've all been designed with that uh, in mind. Um, and what, you know, what am I supposed to do with the life that the Lord has, has given me? Um, and this desire has allowed psychics, mediums, spiritists, fortune tellers, and all the like to wreck in billions of dollars every year to help people figure this out. But the Father has not actually left us in the dark with all this in regards to this aspect of our lives and knowing our future. 
And that's the reason why he's given prophets and the prophetic or the revelatory gifts. Let me say that again, revelatory gifts to help us. So looking at the role of the prophet tonight um, is, is important for us to actually understand what that is, what the Father has actually given us, um, and who us as a yes is um, going forward will will use that within, within our community. Um, there's a book by a guy called um, Ernest Gentile. It's called Your Sons and Daughters Shall Prophesy. And if you read Joel chapter 2, that's where that is taken from. And he says this, There is a continuity between the Old Testament prophets, the New Testament prophets, and today's prophetic church. The two testaments are not opposing books with church history simply tacked on. The testaments are rather two parts of the same book speaking the same language and dynamically linked to the church today through the agency of the blessed Holy Spirit. And the same Holy Spirit that was alive back then and speaking to the prophets is the same Holy Spirit that's alive today. That hasn't changed. Um, I grew up in a, a denomination that probably was secessionist that would have said, you know, the gifts of the Spirit stopped with, with the canon, you know, with the writing of the Bible. And the Lord um, took me on a journey to completely change my thinking on that. And that was based on an encounter that I had with him, more than anything else. Um, where he, and sometimes when you, you have encounters with the Lord where you have to get your theology afterwards because he just takes you somewhere that you never thought you were going to go. Um, one morning, I was a Presbyterian. By the end of the day, I was no longer a Presbyterian boy as such. Um, so um, what is the, the role of the prophet? The main first role of the prophet is to help people hear or see what the Lord is communicating with them for themselves. That's one of the first roles. The Lord still speaks today and is still speaking to each one of us today. Secondly, um, is to help or hear or see what the Lord would like to communicate to the gathered body, whether that's corporately or whether that's individually through the revelatory gifts. And those gifts are found in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Thirdly, a role of the prophet is to bring a word to the people, which may be directional, correctional, or it could be equipping for the works of service. And maybe on occasion there may actually be a word of rebuke. Prophets don't operate individually as lone rangers but do so within the local church context. Helping to establish a culture where the body of Christ can be edified, exhorted, or encouraged. As I mentioned, there may be words of correction or rebuke, but all those are presented to the leadership to be weighed and tested before anything is actually brought to the people. Prophets go through a crushing process which the Lord ordains. And when you read about prophets in the Bible, you hear a lot of what they went through, how the Lord took them through a journey before they were ever in public ministry. Am I okay? No, I wasn't. You okay? Um, And one of the reasons why they go through this crushing process is because they become purer vessels through which the Lord will bring his word. Um, As I mentioned, one of the the roles is to incorporate uh, a prophetic lifestyle within the body. And part of that is to implement uh, a protocol as well, um, whereby believers, all of us, can grow in spiritual gifts in a context of honor, of growth, ensuring that the communication received from the Father is delivered in a way that builds up, encourages, or calls out the gold in the person who's actually receiving the word. Whilst um, Ephesians 4, 11, 16 gives a definition like the rest of what a prophet is called to in terms of equipping the people, and that's what I've been speaking about the most here, um, there are many other roles a prophet will engage in with the Lord and most of which are actually behind closed doors. 
a lot of the journey for a prophet will happen in prayer, in the time that they spend with the Lord. Um, and you will probably not see a lot of what a prophet does because it's all behind the scenes in terms of their journey. Um, so, kind of feel, I don't, uh, this wasn't really in, but I feel I want to open the floor to see if anybody actually has any questions about what I shared. No, not at the minute, okay. Um, Rick, hand over to yourself. Thank you, Bill. Well, good. Hi. How are we doing? Doing all right? Well, that's good. Uh, the piece of paper that we handed out last week uh, to launch is to set in motion. Uh, the, the same page is uh, with us tonight. Uh, for some, they haven't heard this before, all right? And so I'm going to briefly go through what we went through last week in hopes that it also becomes something that begins to reinforce uh, in those who have already heard this piece. Uh, because in order to launch, it's important that we have the uh, behind-the-scenes pieces uh, that go along with it. Uh, that means uh, those things that uh, people don't often see that come to church uh, have not only uh, a, a, a role to play, but they work together uh, to do something so that the, the day, the, the event gets to do exactly what it's there to do and not be distracted by uh, sound and not be distracted by uh, kids wandering through and not be distracted by those things that if they don't happen, uh, become uh, something that uh, isn't healthy or isn't good. So let's go back to this, this piece of paper, okay? Uh, Bill Knox's uh, uh, name is on there and his phone number because Bill is acting as a coordinator of this behind-the-scenes business. We'll talk about what those parts are in a second. Uh, there is a, is, a, is a section right that's next that if you haven't underlined it, it's so important because there is the need for key leaders of these particular areas so that that person can focus on the smooth running of that situation to head off uh, things that might be a problem, uh, to ask for help before it gets to a point where uh, something's affected in a, in a way that is not good. So the key team leaders would be set up and break down. Uh, we have a guy, a young man in, um, in the Church of Fort Collins, soon to be Jesus, uh, that's going to take this role of leading both the, the setup and the breakdown. That doesn't mean he's going to do it all, all right? It just means that we can then funnel volunteers to that particular work, and we don't have to have pass them through multiple levels of information. They can connect with this person. This person can say on that Sunday morning, well, come on, this is the place you need to be. This is the time you need to be there. And uh, it will go super smooth, okay? Uh, sound and visuals is a big one. Uh, this is not for the faint of heart, as you can see by the nuclear reactor over here, uh, that there are things that are complex about sound uh, that need to be done in such a way uh, Debbie asked a great question last week about just the loudness. Is that going to be taken care of in such a way? Michael did a great job of answering that in such a way that, yes, there will be bands and those kind of things, but there needs to be the management of the sound level so that communication is there and uh, it doesn't get to the point where it becomes um, uh, working against itself. Uh, welcome and, and, and directing people. This is so key as people come into the church that they have an opportunity to see not only a friendly face, but somebody who, has, who is informed on which direction to go, who to talk to if they have children. Uh, they can also give them some piece of uh, front-end literature if they've never been to the church before. Uh, and they get something going that, that begins to build anticipation in people in terms of exactly what this work is doing. Just like we're given tidbits 
uh, at the beginning of these meetings, our focus is on the launch, but the tidbits are, man, what makes the launch, this, this, this old name with a new heart, what are the characteristics that are involved uh, that represent that new heart? And so, uh, welcome and direct big children's ministry. This is something that's a 52 week of the year uh, event, along with some specials uh, for Christmas and, uh, and probably the resurrection week. Uh, so it takes uh, somebody to coordinate that, but it also takes setup involvement. It also takes vetting of people that the background checks can be done. So that can be done. That can be a safe place. Check-in procedures. Okay, what happens when uh, uh, you're the teacher in the room, you've got one helper, and then you have three kids that need to go to the bathroom, what do you do? All right? Uh, so there has to be that going on with that, but it takes a good key leader to help that happen. Now, these leaders we're talking about are not people who are going to be involved with ESS on the long term. This is helping us on the front end. There's possibility that somebody gets in, uh, involved and they like it and they become a part of our church, but that's really, not the, that, that's really not the issue. The issue is the first three months of ESS launching to where the things that can take place uh, happen in a smooth way, and we need all hands on deck. What we don't need to do is take the, the six people that are involved in everything else and then load all this on top of it, okay? So we need to spread this out. So... As you talk to people, it's okay to ask them. I talked to my, my grandson today, a brilliant sound dude, and uh, he says, man, I'll help in any way you want. So there becomes something that we get something on the front end uh, as well as the Sunday evening service, uh, which is going to need some of the same components in terms of set up, tear down, sound and visuals, um, welcome team, children's ministry. So... As we look at the ministries and responsibilities, okay, uh, in the center of that page, um, the location that we uh, arrive at uh, will determine some of the things that take place in terms of the specifics uh, for getting that going on a Sunday morning. Uh, someplace uh, like a rented building for a Sunday service is something different than a building that we own, all right, that's actually ready to go. It needs to be uh, uh, filled out more, but it's ready to go in terms of spaces involved that can be used during the rest of the week. That's a different kind of thing. So it would require different kinds of added responsibilities or not as many responsibilities. So as we go down through those things, the setup team, what does that mean in terms of cleaning and putting chairs up and placing out materials and so forth? The breakdown team, what's that mean? You know, stacking chairs, to reversing the process, and leaving it in a, in a state so that somebody that comes in for the next thing or comes in to, to clean up a, a room that's a rented building for that time, man, that, that it's, it's brought to the place where that uh, we're out, our stuff is, is put away, um, or it's in a situation where it's uh, um, stored away and ready for the next event that we don't leave behind. Uh, like I do, uh, you know, I leave my sunglasses in one place and I leave my phone in another place and pretty soon I get home and I've got nothing, all right? Uh, so it, it, it cuts down on that kind of situation. Uh, welcome team, we've already talked about that, but there are some pieces to it that take some training to give people what content to be able to share with people and they don't stand there awkwardly or try to just be, um, uh, try to figure it out on their own. Children's ministry is the same way. There's just a lot of things that happen on the front end of that in terms of setup and washing toys and all that kind of stuff. Uh, super important. Okay, Sunday nights uh, is the next section down. Same thing. Uh, coordinating with morning teams to reduce redundancy. What things can we leave set up? What things can we have on hand that uh, works well for both ministries and makes our cleanup efficient for both? All right. Each meeting that we have, we've got this one, we've got uh, two more after this on Thursday evenings. Uh, they'll be at this location. Uh, with, with that front-end piece of explaining some aspect of ESIS uh, is going to be there, but it's going to be a different every week. And as we start to get key leaders 
uh, and we start to get volunteers. We've got some folks already signed up back here. As that happens, then this part that I do will be more about that than just the general overall picture of what's needed. The bottom of the page, all right, is there so that um, uh, it, it kind of gets the juices flowing about, okay, Lord, what, what place do you want me to be? All right. And, you know, this is different than going to a church. When you go to a church, all this stuff is somehow done. But when you plant a church, this, this becomes an avenue of ministry and relationship with people that you can't get when you have a church that's already established. We have advantages for developing people and having responsibilities. These are not things that are just awful things that we have to deal with. It's a wonderful thing where people begin to connect with each other, begin to pray with each other, begin to recognize one another. And so even though somebody may not stay in ESO's long term, they take away from this, not only are they blessing us with their effort, all right, we're blessing them in terms of their encouragement in the Lord. So it becomes something that's far more than just getting details finished up. So at the bottom of the page, uh, the first month of Sundays on the bottom of the page uh, includes September 17th, which is the first Sunday, and then the following three Sundays that are on deck. Uh, and, and people can take a look at those and say, you know what, I'll be out of town here, but I can do these three, okay? And what area of interest or availability do you have? That's, that's a two-pronged question. Uh, they say, man, I'm, I'm very interested, but my availability plays a role. So this becomes a crossword puzzle, not a crossword puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle would be better, actually, all right? It becomes a jigsaw puzzle in terms of putting together the pieces so each week has a fullness of the things that are necessary uh, for that Sunday morning to be successful in regards to the back uh, and the, the, the in terms of the behind the scenes business, okay? So they may, <coughs> you may write down on there, hey, I would like to help with kids. All right, great. All right. You can put back there on, a, on, on the sign up saying, man, I'm interested in, in, in working with this front end piece for the children's ministry. Great. That gives us the opportunity to know, number one, you're interested in that, in that something. Number two, you need more information. That's good. And you may say, you know what, I'd like to coordinate an area. And that becomes something to where, you know, people say, oh, I just don't know if I have time. You know, to be honest with you, some things we do are sacrificial. They are. All right. It's not giving something up and hope of no return. Because, you know, we have a society that's super busy. Both moms and dads are working. They got kids that are this and that and the other thing, all right? And yet the church sometimes has always been kind of the, 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 the red-haired stepchild. It comes in last in terms of our commitment to what happens. If you look in the book of Malachi, God, God addresses that, saying, you know, you're building your own stuff, but, man, my house lies in ruin. So it's a matter of being able to help people see the importance of, of they may not come to this church, but certainly maybe there's people that want to bless the start of a church. So here we go. So it becomes neither that point of interest and availability, but also, you know, some people say, just put me where you need me. That was my first question to Mike Stevens 100 years ago. All right. Just where do you need me? And I was thinking, oh, clean bathrooms or I'll show us. No, no, it was junior high kids. It was not something that was like, oh, man, this is first on my list, all right? Uh, but it turned out to be a great front door for everything else that's happened in my life. So tonight, uh, before you leave, if you can, you know, begin to write down some things down here. But if you've got something to say, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to be involved, I'm going to be involved, but here's my area of interest, or I want to be involved, I'm going to be involved, I don't know yet, I'm still praying about it, but, man, I'm, I'm going to be involved, and I'm going to write my name down and say I'm in. Okay, that's my, that's my point. All right.
Um, regarding children's ministry, do you guys already have somebody in mind or um, on board that has done that kind of thing before um, as far as developing a children's ministry? I mean, like all of the things that go with it, like, you know, set up and what you need to do to make sure the kids are safe and all of that. Because I was thinking of somebody that we might be able to ask. Um, so I was just wondering, is that already taken? I don't think it's already taken. Okay. Kind of. We already know that uh, Mick and Lisa have put together some information, put together a curriculum. I mean, they actually, Mick came to our uh, leadership meeting and laid out the whole thing, all right? Uh, and Mick says, man, the information, uh, he's going to help or get to us or refresh us on it, all right? And uh, so in terms of the, the, pr the process or what's going to happen, we do have that on hand. But in terms of a person that's going to be involved in being this key person, don't have that yet. Yeah, like I'm so not qualified. I'm a good worker, but I'm not qualified. Okay. Um, and then the other question that I have, there seems to be... S oh, okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think that this person was with Timberline, and so has a great amount of expertise and experience and was a teacher um, and the resources. Um, so I just was wondering if that's something that I can make that introduction. Okay, can do that. Okay. Okay. Okay, got it. Sure. And then the other thing is, is that it looks like there's a little bit of an overlap between the setup team and the welcome team um, as far as placing materials and getting everything. I'm wondering, I, I don't know, I just saw a little bit of an overlap. Uh, okay. That kind of, so that's the difference between what the welcoming people might have on hand in front of them okay. versus the setup people would be primary for the new people uh, or somebody that makes a commitment to Christ, that information uh. would be there for them to check mark or how to get in contact with someone. So. Okay. Okay. Okay, uh, Tony, Sean, Mick, this is you guys' first time here. Uh, this particular section that we have here uh, is for questions, questions about the launch, anything that is on this page, okay? So we would definitely be welcoming any kind of questions that you will have uh, because we also want to make a statement that we we had two uh we had five people new people last week there should be some more people the next two weeks uh some of my folk who are going to show up have been out of town i think bill has a couple more people that are going to show up there's a couple other ones that are going to show up so by the time we have four we would have had uh, several new faces in here that would uh, be interested in being involved. So, excuse me, I just want to make sure, since you guys are new tonight, that you can ask questions about what you see on that sheet as well. Feel free uh, to do that. But are there any more questions over here? But if you do, this is the time to ask those questions. And don't be shy, okay? Uh, because we want to make sure things are clear, 
Yeah. Very good. Yeah. But go ahead. I go ask, ahead. If I may ask. Yeah, I just mentioned about uh, people that are going to be here with Bill and with you that might be visiting. Are they visitors? Or are they just people from another ESS? You're talking about the people coming to these meetings? Yes. Well, no. I mean, oh, you mean next time? No, I'm asking you. I want to make sure you clarify your question. What are okay. you asking? Okay, my question is when we do have new people coming into the church and everything, and uh, we make a connection with them and everything, is there going to be a follow -up phone ministry of any sort? Because I know how many people are kind of concerned about this COVID thing and they're being shot at the door, whatever the case may be, and those kind of things. And, and it's really been a, a hostile situation here within this last year. So my question to you is, is there going to be a follow-up ministry possibly by letter, by phone call? Because I know... For me, for me, it's it's real personal when I talk to somebody and tell them about Jesus, mm -hmm. or I'll welcome him them here to church and wanting to let know how great it was to have them here. How are we going to do that? Yeah. Well, not, not, number one is a it's a great question. Uh, number two, we have not gotten to that point yet because that speaks more of what we do on Sunday mornings, sure. uh, the order of service where you know there's some things we're going to be talking about in the next maybe couple okay. of meetings about okay. how the service will go but first of all not only a great question but it's something that i think we should write down and make sure we have a system for that so we're going to write that down that's something for us to we'll deal with up front because since it'll be new you know you'll have a lot of new faces the first sunday like i said i I've invited over 100 people. 100 people may not show up that first Sunday, okay? But as they show up, I think we do need to have a way by which to connect with them. So is that in the works, or is there anything you can yeah. speak to about that? That's a good question. Yes. Yeah. And having some situation of saying, okay, here's the next step, or here's the next situation, but also, man, uh, you know, uh, the old thing about helping people is you tend to plot where you care for the individual, right? Rather than have one on one. Uh, would you want to be a part of that? I don't mind. Okay. All right. I, I, uh, I well, put the, put the microphone right here so everybody can I, hear. I don't mind because it's. Okay. I uh, I like sharing, you know, uh, with others what God's doing in our lives and in the ministry, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how I would like to see them, you know, continue to come forward and just become a part of yeah. a ministry that's of this magnitude because yeah. it's going to grow. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and you 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 mentioned it's grow. you mentioned a pretty significant piece because from from new people coming in, uh, like Rick was sharing about that personal contact. The evangelism team is something that we build who actually goes and visit those people as well, not just a welcoming committee. But you get a chance to not only, you know, welcome them and find out what's going on, but you also get a chance to share with them, you know, what the church is about. And sometimes because uh, they are not necessarily connected to a church, but at the same time, come from another church, you know, we, we want to find out where they are spiritually. And in that spiritually finding it out, we get a chance to share the gospel with them, you see. So a lot of that's involved in that, and Eos's of old did that. Uh, and, we, you know, we I don't know if we're going to have the things that people fill out and, you know, and they, they can request a visit, or would you like for us to come and whatever, and then we send a team out to minister to them, so... Excellent, excellent. You know, I, I found that mainly texting and staying in touch with them. That, that, that really works good. That really works good. So because I, they want to know on a personal level that you really do care for them, that you really are reaching out, not just, just to get numbers. 
It's because a genuine care for the individual, their soul. Okay. God bless you. Go ahead. Uh, let's give that to Bill. Are you going to be the runner? All right, buddy. Just, just, just want to know. <laughs> We uh, thought about uh, early with the church at Fort Collins uh, was security team. Yes. And I didn't know if you have thought about that or. Yes, we have thought about it. Okay. Uh, when, when Peter at our last meeting uh, Wednesday talked about the insurance mm -hmm. <clears throat> for the protection of uh, anybody involved in ESC's leadership or whatever. I had that thought in my mind, but I had not brought that forward. I'm so glad you brought that tonight. Yeah. We got to have that. Yeah. We got to have that up Good. front. Up front. Got to do that. So you guys uh, show us how to do that. Or you, we can just grab y'all and say, bring that with you. <laughs> what do you want to speak to that? Peter, go ahead. Let's, let's have Peter speak to that. He knows about that stuff. So let's have Peter speak to that. Uh, yeah, we do need security team. Uh, security in churches, up until very recently, uh, way out uh, the damage in churches far exceeds that in schools. However, recently we've had such a wave of school things, I'm not sure that's still true. But uh, we need people who are tuned in. We need people who are concealed carry. We need people who are trained and willing to be trained and people uh, who will be involved. There is a good group uh, of the churches that meet together, the security teams meet together in Fort Collins. It came out of that, that uh, meeting we, that you opened for us. And uh, so that is something we need to do. And that's something where we need to ask, start asking people uh, that are involved Yeah, that's in that. front end. That's front end stuff. So yeah. we may have to put that together as well. The reason, the reason it's not on this list is it's, it's just not a volunteer thing. That is something that we are actively looking for, people who have background and know how. And, and, uh, and uh, so it's a great question. Yeah, absolutely. But what I'm hearing is that we need that day one. Is that correct? We need that day one. Uh, yeah, you yeah, that's what I think is. We need that day one. So, uh, I only know one person who still carries in the church. And we need to have him. And it's not me. <laughs> so it's not something else. You know, you're going to reveal the yes there. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So, so Sean and Mick, any, any questions that you have, uh, you know, we want to, you know, get your, and we're not putting you on the spot because all these people here have talked, you know, first week where they're talking again the second week. I love it. I like that suggestion. Go ahead. Bill, you got to be the runner, man. You got to catch the hands. Anything from anybody else? Okay. Mick, you have any questions? Go ahead. Shoot that over to Mick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as far as Sunday night, is, is, are you planning one location or is it small groups or what? So uh, you need to be a little bit more specific on that question. I think I know what you're asking. Rick can answer that, but go ahead. When you say one location, what do you mean? 
Uh, is uh, the body meeting in one location on Sunday night? Yes, yes, okay. yes it is. It's okay. going to meet in one location. And then you said something about small group. You want to fill that out a little bit? Yeah, I was just curious as far as what the format on Sunday nights was, whether the body meets together as a group okay. again, like on Sunday night, or yeah. uh, they you know, met in small groups. Yeah, Rick can give you a, uh, an understanding of how that's... Sunday night is a different setting than a Sunday morning. It's not a Bible study. Uh, it's not a, uh, another church service as we know it. Uh, really, it is something that it, it, it respects and brings the people an opportunity to connect with this piece of the prophetic, uh, giving people some education, giving people some experience. Uh, and so it's that piece uh, stuff for Sunday night. So it's a body meeting it's for all who would uh, be able to come and be encouraged to come. Uh, so it's not a particular small group. It's more uh, directed towards uh, developing the prophetic ministry in the church. Okay, so I, I, I directed to the wrong situation. Bill can tell you more about Sunday night. I was wondering if when you asked the question about small groups, did you when you said small group, that's why I wanted you to define it. Uh, you know, church meets in a large group on Sunday mornings, and then Sunday night people come back, like Rick is sharing, to learn how to hear God's voice. We're also going to have small groups. So when you mentioned the word small groups, that's what went in my head. I just want to make sure I heard you right. Because Bill could ask the question about Sunday night, but Rick can answer the question about small groups, so help me direct you in the right way. <laughs> well, the the question was just a general question as okay. far as what the format of Sunday evenings would be, uh, whether it was you know the body meeting as a group, uh, mm -hmm. as a whole, mm -hmm. uh, okay. versus you know meeting in small groups. That, yeah, you know. Go ahead. specifically focused looking at prophetic and what that ministry looks like and as Rick was saying there'll be teaching opportunities for people to, to step into understanding how to operate in the prophetic, hear God for themselves things like that so it's, it will be a focused kind of meeting that people are coming to so, so but he mentioned small groups would, would there be small groups getting together in that format as well, people meeting in small groups at all? Um, um, I, I can't, uh, no, not, not necessarily, because it all will depend on what's happening in the night. Um, okay, all right. Um, mm -hmm. if, it's a, if it's a small group setting, it will be still focused on, um, you know, the prophetic, but at least maybe people in groups of three rather than actual small group with a number of six or seven so um, maybe there'll be some practical things we would do you'd break up into groups mm -hmm. of three but that would mm -hmm. be a small group setting as we would understand mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. okay so we just want to make sure we're answering your question have we? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, one follow-up question was, uh, <clears throat> when you're talking about prophetic, what is the emphasis of Sunday evenings as far as uh, teaching edification, uh, building up the body uh, in... in uh, well, I was talking about earlier on tonight, about the role of the prophet. Okay. That's, that's what it's going to be. It'll be a, it's about specifically equipping the body of Christ with regards to the prophetic about hearing God. There's a focus on that. Okay, yeah, that, that's the other word I was thinking of, equipping. So, so if they're going to develop a, a, is it a, a prophetic ministry, mm -hmm. is there going to be a school or a class on that? Yeah, there'll be another prophetic, specific prophetic ministry team that will be put together. Um, some of that may come out in Sunday evening of, of what we do with Sunday evenings uh, with, with people, those who kind of feel called, but there'll be a vetting process, if you want to call it that, um, and I will be meeting with people who feel that they're called to that, um, and we'll, you know, work working out with them what that looks like for them, and 
and whether that's something we feel the Lord's taking them into. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. <clears throat> There's nothing that says we need to be here until 8.15, but we do have 8.15 as a stopping point. If we find ourselves in a place where we don't have any more questions, okay, uh, do we have any more questions? <laughs> do we? Uh, do we? Because most of these meetings that we're having, the next three or four, number three and number four, is really pointed towards the launch. As far as the guts of, you know, the fivefold, we're going to be teaching that in, in this fullness down the road. Where, where people can come and learn about what these five offices are about and how they dovetail together as well as individual and work up under the church by which to bring the whole church to health. That's the whole purpose of it, is that people might be brought to maturity. Uh, and we're going to be talking about that, but uh, these four meetings, it's not like you can't ask those questions, but we would like to reserve the questions for the launch more than specific things that we're going to be doing in those five areas because we're going to be hitting that a lot as Jesus is, you know, uh, get, get lunch on Sunday mornings and people will be asking questions on Sunday night. So don't feel like you can't answer those questions, but let's just make sure we let the meeting time be what it is here for to, to, to talk about some things that we need to get ready for. So don't you hear me say you can't answer those, ask those questions, but let's at least give that other questions priority. Any other questions about anything else before we uh, move on? Okay, before I bring Bill uh, back up to kind of close us out in a, in a particular prayer time, uh, one of the things I just kind of want to overall hit, okay, is that I want you to know, once again, I'll keep saying it, we will be getting this information out to people throughout the week, okay? And Rick is sending stuff out on text and every name we get, everybody, anybody else that wants to be involved, he sends that information out, okay? So there's several people who've gotten the information. Uh, second of all, you know, each meeting, we will probably have new faces. So if we find ourselves going over again, for some of you who've been here, we don't want it to be redundant as much as we want it to be consistent. Because we, cause when somebody new shows up, they need to be able to hear what's on the sheet from start to finish. You know, you might even have some ideas that pop up and you just like Suzanne said, hey, I got somebody that I think we need to look at, you know, for nursery and all that, so that's good. We need that information, we really do. Uh, and those new people who show up <clears throat> are also gonna be asking uh, some questions that may seem redundant as well. We want clarity so that when we have that first Sunday, whether it's two people, 200, 50, 20, it's irrelevant. We just want to make sure what's going on behind the scenes is running smooth because that's the key. That's the big, big key. You know, and, and sometimes a church can grow. I've had the experience of having a church grow so fast, so quick. You know, I was just pulling people out of the congregation and just throwing them in the ministry <laughs> just, just to keep it and you know uh, we're not going to do that again <laughs> I don't want those kind of headaches that's why this is so important that you go slow and and you you do it right you know uh, so so that's that's at least what I need to tell you and then the, the third thing I'd like to tell you before we kind of close it out is that we will continue, even in our announcements on Sunday mornings, to begin to not necessarily have a cattle call, but if we have some of these positions that are not yet filled, we'll be asking on Sunday mornings for people to come fill that spot. Hey, if you want to get involved in, you know, yes, there's some spots here. 
you know, information is on the table or whatever. So we're going to continue to do that to make sure all of these spots are full, you know, in, in that area. So I don't know, uh, Rick, would you have anything else? Okay. If you know of people like what Suzanne was saying about children's ministry, saying, man, you know what? There are some people that maybe would uh, respond if we would just get them some information. Man, give me those names, and they'll get everything. Because what people should be getting is they should be getting uh, a note uh, about uh, the next meeting, the meetings we've had, and they should get the opportunity to have the um, links for being able to watch these because we have people that are, are wanting to help but don't live in Fort Collins. They're going to help during a particular piece of this. And so they're being kept uh, up on what's going on. So if you have people, let me know, and I'll get them caught up. They have to be able to tell us what their availability is, yes. Right. Yeah. It may. Yeah. It may not be three months. It may be three services. Okay. Well, that's okay. Um, well, that might change what I was about to do. I don't know. Let me see. Holy Spirit, what do you want to do? Hmm. Okay. Um, he just told me that it goes. That goes in line with what I was going to share. Amen. So, because um, when Ezekiel was taken to the Valley of Dry Bones, the Lord was asking him, "What do you see?" He was asking him, "What do you see?" Okay. Um, Hebrews 12, first couple of verses of Hebrews 12. It says this, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles, entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Whenever you look at Jesus, who do you see? For so many years I read this and I thought it was author and perfecter of our faith, but it's author and perfecter of faith. Faith has been given to us for us to steward. It's a gift from God, gift of faith that's been given to us for us to steward. What, I mean, what are we doing with our faith to be able to run the endurance that we're about to step into something new? And what you were saying about, you know, it's that Jesus is asking us, what do you see when you look at me? He asked the disciples, who do people say I am? And I think he still asks us the same question. 
Who do you say that I am? Whenever you look at Jesus, what do you see? Because what you see in Jesus is a reflection of Jesus in you as well. That that faith that we have been given enables us to run the race with the endurance. Because he saw that we were the joy set before him. And that's why he endured the cross. That's why he endured the cross. Father, we thank you for our time tonight. We thank you for looking at us and seeing the joy that was set before you, Jesus, that you endured the cross, that you despised the shame, that you said yes to your Father. And we come before you and we say yes, Lord, that we look into the eyes of Jesus knowing the one who loves us, knowing the one that calls us brothers, knowing, Father, you call us sons and daughters, that we are co-heirs with Christ. And, Father, we trust you with this launch of Aesis. We ask you uh, to move by the power of your Spirit that we would see many come into your kingdom. We give you thanks. We say that all the glory and honor belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen.